All right, hello, I am Major Leah Meyer. Hello everyone, I'm A1C Peter Lord. And we are here representing the Minot Air Force Base DUI Task Force. So what is the DUI Task Force here at Minot? So the DUI Task Force is a cross-section of individuals, um, commanders, shirts, uh, but primarily junior enlisted members that are getting after reversing a trend that we've seen here, um, particularly alarming over the last uh, six to eight months. So the task force itself kicked off in May um, and the whole reason that the whole why behind it is because we have a big problem here at Minot. Uh, back in May, um, we were at 200% above the DUI numbers as we were the year before and that wasn't a particularly great year. So we have to get after it by calling it what it is. It's a problem at Minot that we are here to, to change. What we are finding is it isn't one population. It's not one unit per se, um, but it's um, across organizations and across both the wings here. Um, it's not a failure of individual choice necessarily, um, but a, a community failure. What we could be doing better is to arm the big A airmen with more education and more tools and better understanding of the repercussions and the risks they're being taken when they make the choice to drink and drive. What we're continually finding is there's no clear understanding of what those repercussions uh, could be. Um, the other thing we're going to do is get after education and messaging. I think the messaging is all wrong. The messaging isn't uh, don't do it. The message is that's not who we are. Um, the airmen that are part of this DUI task force and um, that joined the military, they joined to serve, they joined to be a part of something bigger than themselves not to be associated with this kind of trend and certainly not to end up in trouble, uh, you know, standing in front of their commander. Um, that's, that's not the purpose, that's not why they joined. Um, so we've got to get after what we can do to fix that. I think one way to best understand this is to hear a personal story. So I'll turn it over to you, Peter. Thank you, Major Meyer. So recently, or actually a few years back, uh, a buddy and I went to a local bar and you know, we're just enjoying ourselves out there just like everybody else. Uh, we haven't seen each other for a while. And so, you know, we each had a few beers and then uh, a few beers turned into a few shots. And next thing you know, it's time to go home. You know, the bartender called for uh, last round. And so we eventually leave like everybody else. And me being like a big brother to him, I've always uh, driven us home, made it home safely every time. He always got away. And this particular night was different. You know, we had a lot of drink and we did get home. You know, I got him home safely, but I stopped short of the uh, parking spot. So that was the first sign that, hey, you know, you're intoxicated. Uh, next thing was he noticed it as well. So he took the keys, he turned the car off, he walked home with the keys so that I would follow him and, you know, I would crash into his house. But instead I was like, hey bro, I'm good. Let me get my keys, I'm gonna go home. At this point, I was severely intoxicated and I was gonna fight him for the keys because I wanted to go home too. You know, I wanted to go home, just rest up because we had a uh, we had a plan the following day as well, so I want to make sure I was uh, well rested. And I told him, I was like, bro, I'm good, you know, let me get the keys and you know, don't worry about me. I always got home safely, you don't worry about it another night. So he eventually gave me the keys uh, with uh, having trust in mind. And so right then and there after I left, not too long after that, about five minutes or 10 minutes down the road, uh, I was pulled over and I was booked into the county jail for uh, DUI. And a few, uh, a few things that you know I've learned throughout this whole situation was that um, there's a lot of things, a lot of privileges that were taken away. Uh, one of the few things were uh, I didn't realize that if uh, you were on a control roster or a UIF and you have a referral PR that you couldn't go to school. Uh, with the control roster and UIF, I didn't know that you are not able to PCS uh, for the most part. Uh, you know, a few things that came along with that were the uh, rank deduction, the driving uh, suspension. And, you know, I'm here with you guys today just to let you guys know that um, use me as an example. You know, don't go out there, drink, and be careless and irresponsible and reckless. Uh, remember, have my story in mind every time you go out there, every time you see a wingman out there that's drinking or is uh, potentially going to be driving home. Uh, utilize what we are about to give you as a solution. And you know, I'm here with you guys today to be a part of the solution. And uh, back to you, Major Meyer. Okay. Um, Peter's story is so important, and I think he really hits on 
um, what we're missing as far as, as messaging and education. You know, it's not just the UIF and the control roster, the LOR, the losing a stripe, um, but there's PRP ramifications. There's Army use of force um, ramifications. There's a whole host of things that um, individuals just don't know potentially could happen to them if they make that choice. They're taking the risk because they're not fully aware of the repercussions of those actions. Uh, so what we're going to do, what you're going to see is some changes um, and some new um, efforts and some new um, actions around Minot Air Force Base to get after solving this problem. The first thing we've got to get after is to change the messaging. So as a member of the military, as a member of the Air Force, you know, we have core values and the, types, the kinds of activity and the reputation that we're gaining here at Minot does not reflect those core values. We've got to get after the messaging there. Um, Peter talked about some of the, the, the repercussions, but there, it's more than financial and it's more than professional. There's, there's, there's social and there's emotional repercussions. And the minute we come across as selling this like it's part of a checklist, I don't make bad choices, don't do illegal activity, don't drink and drive, don't harass, we lose, we lose our audience. So we've got to have a serious conversation and we have to have the specifics to lay it all out in front of our folks to give them the information they need and that they deserve um, to make the right choices and to reverse uh, this trend. You are going to see some changes around base. Um, there's going to be some new signs, um, some new goals set. Um, we're going to draw a line in the sand and, and make sure that folks understand what's going on and that they're all part of the solution. Um, we're doing our best to reinvigorate AADD. Um, there's a lot of goodness that that organization can bring and some real low-hanging fruit that we can get after that we think will have a positive impact uh, around base and around Minot. You'll hear more DUI testimonials, um, not just from individuals who received DUIs, but um, from their wingmen that night that allowed them to drive home, from their supervisors who maybe felt that they could have done more, um, from the commanders that needed to tweak their messaging. You're going to hear more um, of those testimonials as we move forward. Um, you're going to see some some police lights placed at different points to remind folks, hey, when you're coming to the gate, you're going to give your ID card to uh, to a cop, to a police officer, right? So a reminder that it's a really serious choice. Um, so you're going to start to see a whole lot more around Minot Air Force Base to get us moving uh, in the right direction. Um, you're going to see more task force focus groups, and those are going to be at your unit if they haven't been already. And that small groups of enlisted led uh, members that are just having a conversation, all right? So this shouldn't be a top-down approach. It's not meant to be um, directed from, from the colonels and the commanders. It's, it's gotta be a whole of community approach led by um, our junior enlisted and really get after what's causing this and what would make a difference, what would be a deterrence. Um, those are the kind of things that we're trying to get at with those conversations. The biggest thing we need is your help at this point. So if, if you have ideas, and um, if you think that there's more that can be done, reach out. Um, there's DUI task force members all across the base um, in every single unit. So reach out, get involved, make sure that the messaging is clear. That's not who we are um, as a force, as military members. And we wanna get after a solution. So help us, bring us the information, spread the word, um, give us feedback, what's working and what's not. That's what we really need because this comes down to a community solution and, and we need everyone's help in getting there.